All right. She was great, wasn't she? She was fucking great. Are you guys ready for more comedy? Are you guys ready? You know what? First of all, I hate asking if y'all are ready for more comedy because y'all paid to be here, so I'm going to assume that you're ready for more comedy. I, it's stupid to even ask, right? So get ready for this next comedian. She is hilarious. Very honored to be bringing her up to the stage. You might have seen her on Comedy Central. Get those hands together, y'all. Get those hands together. Get those hands. Hey, let's go. Let's go. Victoria Arnstein, everybody. Yeah, give it up again for Ryan Dempsey. Thank you so much. Oh, you guys, I had such an experience recently. I was in, uh, I'm here from New York. Anybody ever hear of it? Manhattan? Anybody? Anybody here from Manhattan? Let me yes. hear it. All right, one person. That's nice. Yeah. Anybody else ever hear about it or go there? <laughs> you know about the subway, right? Yeah. Okay. So I was just there, and um, yeah, and I don't like the subway. I was there, and there was a sign, uh, Back to the Future is coming. Do you guys see that? Back to the Future is coming to Broadway. I don't know if you guys know that. The Broadway show is coming. It's about, a, it's about a time machine. I gotta tell the young people that. No one knows what I'm talking about. I'm aging myself. But uh, it was about the time travel, and my friend and I were walking past, and my friend says, oh, wouldn't it be so cool if we went back in time? I'm like, no. I'm a Jewish woman. When was it good for me? <laughs> he goes, and it's weird because he's a black guy. And I was like, when was it good for you? <laughs> so he goes, no, that would be so cool. You go back in time and you can go to the 1930s in Austria and warn them about the Holocaust. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to warn them about the Holocaust? Who the fuck is going to plug in my time machine when I get there? There's no bandwidth for that shit, right? Now I'm stuck in Austria and I gotta tell this one little family because there's no internet so we can't go anywhere else. I have to go to this one little family tell them how horrific the next six years are gonna be. Everybody's gonna die. It's gonna be crazy as shit and everything's gonna be horrific because nothing's insanity like a crazy bitch from the future with a time machine. <laughs> so my friend says, calm down, calm down. I said, oh yeah, that's the perfect thing to say to a woman when she's angry, calm down. I didn't look good because I was a white woman yelling at a black man in the subway <laughs> in 2024. So I did what any other white woman would have done with a guilt like that. I fucked them. <laughs> so I'm married. <laughs> Actually just celebrated 25 year wedding anniversary, guys. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Anybody else here married? Let's shout it out. Yeah, happily? All right. I, uh, I just celebrated 25 years. It was a very special anniversary. My husband took me to this supermarket. <laughs> it wasn't just any supermarket. It was fucking Whole Foods. <laughs> Crushing it. Uh, they say, uh, do what you love, and you never have to work a day in your life. So I got married, and I do my husband. It's accurate, guys. That's it. <laughs> Best career move I ever made. I can't think of a better career where he goes to work and I don't. What do I have to do to stay married? Have sex sometimes? What? What a good deal, right? I mean, look, my career was looking for a husband. That was my career. I didn't even go to bridal showers. No men, not going. Just going straight. Listen, I married him for love. Stupid. Anybody here single, ladies? Young ladies, anybody? Let me hear from the young ladies that are single. Not one, but only one person's married. I'm gonna do the math on that one. I'm gonna say you're lying, okay? You're a lying crowd, and I'm not digging that, okay? Any more participation? Anybody? Anybody here single and young? Shout it out. Listen, I come from the future, is what my point is. And I can't even say that joke if you're not young, okay? But, you know, it says men at work on those signs. It doesn't say women at work, okay? So this is my, my point. Like, I didn't marry up at the time. I'm, I'm, I'm urging you women to marry up if you have to. Just put a bag over his head, whatever you have to do. Because it's a hard 25 years without money, let me tell you. But now he has money. I played the long game. Smart. I didn't know there was a long game, but I did play it. And I was waiting and waiting and waiting. But no prenup, huh? So who the fuck wins in the end, me, right? You know how I know? Like, how are we gonna do the career thing? I mean, what are we gonna do? Have a career and then what, not blame anybody else for it? But that's not fun, <laughs> right? And it, you, you want a career, I want a career, all these women, I want a career, no, you want a headache. You know how I know what's a headache? My husband's at the office right now. He has a headache. The career is very tough. 
So my career was looking for a husband, and I did that, and I finally got what I wanted, and now I'm almost 100, and I'm, it doesn't matter, I, I got here. But if you could do it better than I could, marry up from now, ladies, this is a very good career. I can't think of a better career, maybe, maybe porn. <laughs> I mean, that's a, a Bitcoin. I don't know what, any other, I, what other career is better. What do you guys think? Doctor, you gotta go to school for that shit. Where else could you have a career where you're in the middle of an argument, you just lift up your shirt, you don't get sued. You sleep with your boss, no sue, right? But don't get it twisted, like I, I mean, you don't have a boss if you don't, ha if you don't have a prenup, you're the boss. I'm the boss, see, like, I have a friend, she's a whore. Uh, she's actually a prostitute. It's higher up. That's where they get paid. She doesn't call herself a prostitute, but every man takes her for dinner, and then they pay for dinner, and then they have sex. That's a prostitute, right? Right? She's a good sport. I'm not even putting her down. I'm actually really jealous because I'm married, and I only have one client, my husband. So, <laughs> business is slow. <laughs> it's really slow. No, I, I actually am I'm good to him now. I'm starting to save him some money. Yeah, a little bit, you know. We, we were laying around in bed casually and out of nowhere, he says to me, I wanna go on an adventure. I love an adventure. I wanna go skydiving all over the world. I love the element of surprise and the adrenaline rush. So I pushed him off the bed. <laughs> huh? That handled everything. It was free, we didn't have to leave the house. Who is the best wife now, huh? Best wife ever. He also likes a challenge, so I made up this new game called Eeny Meeny Money Mo. That's, That's where I empty all our bank accounts and make him guess where that money is, huh? <laughs> it's always my bank account, guys. <laughs> oh. But, um, you know, I, I think that you have, to, you have to just be cautious of everything, too. Like, this feminist out there now, my enemy. <laughs> they are. Feminists are fucking up my shit, guys, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I worked hard for this, okay? My husband's starting to think we're equal now. I'm so much more superior than he is. Like, lately, he's been asking me to do this horrible thing called um, work. I'm like, I mean, a day job? You know, I tell jokes for 10 minutes a night, right? Because that doesn't do anything. I said, oh, really? I asked you what I was good at. You said I was great at complaining, and I don't shut the fuck up. I think I nailed it. <laughs> Day, all I do is work for you, like he's catching on. I said, oh my God, honey, you're right, you do work for me. Who said you could talk to your boss this long? Wrap it up, break time's over. <sighs> a millennial came up to me after a show once. You know these millennials? She said, don't you want to work and make your own money? I said, no, I want my husband to work and make my own money. She said, don't you want to contribute to the world? I said, what do you do? She goes, I'm a cake decorator. <laughs> I said, oh, so you contribute to obesity and diabetes? I got three kids in the bath at the same time and no one died. Do you know how hard that is? When they're screaming shit like, ma, don't drown me, don't drown me. <laughs> When I'm fixing a martini, I'm drinking, I'm texting, I'm driving. <laughs> Back home to check on them, it's not even I'm a good mom, though. I really am a good mom. My kids have never watched porn a day in their life. They're older now. They've never watched porn. I know that for sure. They told me. No, but I know for sure because I told them back in the day I was a porn star. <laughs> Not enough therapy in the world. <laughs> Come across that video, huh? But my husband can't stop trying to look for it. Um, <laughs> no, he doesn't watch porn either. He doesn't. And I, the reason why I know is because I told him his mom was a porn star. <laughs> now let's talk about this porn, huh? Let's just, I mean, it's a billion dollar industry. I don't know if you guys know. Uh, I think these porn, these, listen. There's always going to be a porn star that had sex and had a kid, right? So there's do, if you do the math, who are these kids? And where are they finding out that their mom got fucked by other men? Like, how is that processing? Are they finding out in the first grade? Really? Like, how did they find out? They go down the sliding line at a, at a school park, 
And then all of a sudden, they, their friend is like, hey, <laughs> see your mom, she's sucking that dick. How do you, <laughs> right? I mean, if you just, I mean, I thought about this the other day, I'm like trying to find out how do these kids process it? Like, God bless those mothers that are porn stars that do tell their children, because like them, they will never watch porn either. So good for them. But I really do think that porn stars are doing a good service now. I really do. I actually think of them as heroes, like ambulance drivers. I really do. And the reason is because I think there's less rape today because people are shooting their loads. Like, that's it, right? Am I, am I the only one who thinks this? Okay, that was a new one, but I just wanted to get that out of my head because I'm thinking about it, you know? Like, what do you do if your kid's friends with somebody who they're, and their mom is a porn star? And your husband watched it. Like, how do you, how do you process that? I'm the only one thinking about this. This is embarrassing. <laughs> you know, guys, I'm not even a comedian. Uh, I'm not. My husband pays the owner of this club, so I can get in. <laughs> Any questions Anybody? so far? Any questions? Let's pick up the mood. So cancer's hard to live with, right? The zodiac sign. Who hears of cancer, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So you're hard to live with, all right? It's a crab. It's the most protective of their mate. I can say this because I used to date a guy that was a cancer. He was so jealous. He was so protective. But the worst part about him was that he hated that I had a husband. So I was like, I'm not going to do with that. It's okay. I made the better choice. My husband has a much bigger bank account. So we're good. Can't crack you, but that's okay. You're sitting up front. Can't really laugh. You're okay. I don't know. Are you? Oh, now she's laughing when I don't write the jokes. That's fine. <laughs> After the joke, she's like, that's funny. Uh, she learned cancer too? You didn't say anything? All right. <laughs> Hard to live with. <laughs> I just got back from a comedy world tour, actually, if you want another truth. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a lot of fun going to all the different countries and telling jokes at Epcot Center. I liked it a lot. <laughs> I'm not world famous, I'm comedy famous, you know? Comedy famous is different from world fame. I don't know. I don't know if I ever want to be world famous. I don't know if I could be famous, you know? Because like, ugh, I'm famous and when I die, who's gonna play me in a movie? That horrible looking actress, Margot Robbie? <laughs> Can't take that chance. Not yet, she's horrible looking. Can't take that chance. No, but uh, somebody did come up to me in New York. They're very aggressive in New York. She, oh my God, I saw your picture. It was at a comedy club. You know, my picture's hanging on the wall. It was the bathroom wall, but it's fine. It's still the comedy store. Okay. Um, I think uh, natural selection is real, but women in particular are really stupid, I think. They're getting dumber. Is that what's happening? The Kardashians, is that our role model? Really? The Kardashians? I don't know. But how the head of the role? I mean, because they're making billions. If you just add that up, how did they get so popular? I know my kids like it, so I know I failed as a parent. So I'm trying to think, like, how did the Kardashians get to be the role model? They can't find a man. When they get a man, they can't keep a man. When they have a man, he can't even stay a man. <laughs> <laughs> but natural selection's real. I think natural selection is very real. Do you find that people are getting dumber? Like Tide Pods? These people are so stupid. They're so dumb. There's warning labels on everything. I have a... All right. I was at a store and there was a warning label on a stroller. You guys, you gotta hear this one. They're talking. It's the perfect time to have a conversation. Right? In the front row. Um, yeah, thank you. The stroller, there's a warning label on the stroller. It says, remember to take the baby out before folding it. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? How many times did somebody have to fucking try to fold it with the fucking baby inside until someone said, you know what? We should put a warning label on that thing. What is a woman going like this? What the fuck? What the fuck? It's not me. It's the stroller. What's that sound? It sounds like a baby crying. What the fuck is that? And stroller. Maybe don't be a mom, okay? <laughs> Got bigger problems. <sighs> Coughing syrup for children. 
Did you read the warning label for quilt pink syrup for children? Do not ever, do not operate heavy machinery or drive a vehicle. Okay. Which baby's reading? At two. And second of all, is this the mother they're talking about? Like, what the fuck are we doing? This is a warning label? Okay. Has anybody ever, and, and really, really, just scream it out, because I can't see everybody. Has anybody ever, ever seen a baby driving on the highway, drunk? Anyone? No, you haven't, and I'll bet a lot of money on it, and you know why I'll bet a lot of money on it? Because that person is not here right now. They're home counting their millions because their video taking that went viral. That's why. How about this other warning label that I have? I actually have this on my curling iron. It says, for external use only. <laughs> what the fuck had to happen? How many times did someone have to go to the emergency room for that one? <laughs> and the doctor's like, what the hole did you put this in? You turned it on. <laughs> you plugged it in. I like to sell my husband's things on Craigslist. Make extra money. That's a thing. He doesn't have to know. He was selling a ladder. It was shiny and new. I was selling it for $50 a bargain. It was $250, $50, brand new. There's always this one guy who writes, I'll, give, I'll buy that ladder from you for $40. And then he writes, that's all the money I have. What? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You're a grown man and you only have two $20 bills? <laughs> You're a grown man, and you only have two Andrew Jacksons. <sighs> so, let me get this straight. You're a grown man, and you only have $40. You don't want to buy food <laughs> to survive? <clears throat> you just want to buy a ladder? I said, all right, I'll give you that ladder for $40. And I'll throw the rope in for free, huh? <laughs> That's a visual of a suicide. <laughs> What the fuck else was he buying it for? It's okay, he was a pedophile. <laughs> I don't know. I just want you to like me. <laughs> I hate kids. Um, not everyone, it's just mine. They're clingy and expensive, you know, when they were little, I had to pay for everything with the money my husband gave me. <laughs> I had to pay for their food. I had to pay for their violin lessons. Ugh, I had to pay other children to play with them. I'm kidding, they play violin, I'm not a monster. Uh, when my kid was uh, 11 years old, actually, my, kid, my friends give me a hard time because I give my kids an eating disorder, you know, to save money. It's a good tip. Oh, no, are the parents here? Okay. All right. Uh, not the kind of eating disorder where they throw up their food. I'm not distracted at all, by the way. This is totally normal. It's my special. Taping the Netflix right now. Um, not the kind of eating disorder where they throw up their food. I'm a Jewish mother, I would never do that. That's a waste of food and money. The kind where I tell them they're fat and over time they don't eat dinner and over time that shit adds up and there's a Porsche out there with my name on it. It's not gonna fucking by itself, right? When my uh, 11 year old, well, I have, my youngest is 18, but when she was an 11 year old, she was such a pain in my ass because she still lived with us at home, you know? Yeah, she walked in on her father and I having sex. That's an actual story that's true. I said, don't you knock? She goes, you're in the kitchen. <laughs> I said, what are you doing in the kitchen? I thought I gave you that eating disorder. Then I had to have that long, awkward talk with her. You know, the one where I had to tell her she had to move out. She's doing okay though. She's actually school president. She graduated with the honors, guys. My daughter, thank you, thank you, thank you. She was homeschooled. But, um, I didn't even know what I was doing in homeschool. You know, the first day I was like, watch this. 
video of Benjamin Franklin. I hear he's a genius. I'm like, go run along. It was like a week-long documentary. She comes running back to me. She goes, Mom, Benjamin Franklin paid women to have sex with him. Oh my God. Probably should have watched the video first. But in my defense, it got a lot of views. I go, oh my God, he was a genius. You see how ugly he was? He had to pay women to have sex with him. Plus, that's how the $100 bill was invented, because he was sick of paying those hookers with 50s. <laughs> I put that under finance and history. I'm a good teacher. Um, so yeah, you, should, you guys should totally have a conversation now in the front row. That's a great idea. I'm so totally distracted by it. It's okay. We'll talk later. We'll exchange recipes, whatever. Whatever it is women do. Women don't do that. Anyway, um, I know more men that are cooks, that are great cooks. All right, I don't know where I was going with that. I was just distracted a little bit, but that's fine. I don't like this woke shit. You guys know what this woke shit is? It's starting to get to me, you know? Like the other day, I was teaching my daughter that the tiger shark was the most vicious in the ocean, second to the great white. She whispers in my ear, great white, that's racist. <laughs> I lost my shit. I said, shut the fuck up, you loser bitch. And I had to explain to everyone sitting in the waiting room at the pediatrics office what happened. <laughs> because she whispered and I yelled, and that's sneaky. And I did explain to everybody there that, uh, you know, I'm trying to empower my daughter how to talk to someone like me. I think they all agreed that teaching came very naturally to me. <laughs> Child services doesn't stop calling me. <laughs> all right, so I want to tell you about this little thing that happened. Uh, you guys, uh, anybody on Tinder on the dating website since you're all married? <laughs> One person said they're married, but nobody else. All right. You guys on Tinder? Just me? All right. I'm only on there just to look, you know, because like, all right. I was almost, I was separated for a little bit. I know, hard to believe my husband separated from me, but he did, and I was buying Tinder on premium. Uh, I, anyway, his credit card. But anyway, um, okay, so let's just say, like, it's very dangerous to go on Tinder today. You know, I do look for my children. It's very dangerous. I'm looking for a multimillionaire for my kids. Billionaire, it doesn't matter. I don't know if they're on there, but anyway. I looked and there was a guy who was very attractive, blonde hair, blue eyes. He was a foodie, he was exotic foods, he loved it, he was a chef at a really nice restaurant. And uh, he was Jeffrey Dahmer, so you gotta be <laughs> very careful. What if, what if people from history were on Tinder today? How would that look? Like, let's go to really nice people like Buddha. Buddha. Oh, let's look at his profile picture, shall we? He doesn't have a shirt on. He's really overweight. <laughs> No possessions, well, <laughs> foreign, so uh, he's not betting a thousand right now. But then it's a spiritual healer, that's very nice. But then his quote says, come over and rub my belly for good luck. <laughs> that's creepy. What if Jesus Christ was on Tinder today? How would that look, huh? You guys think so great? Mm. First of all, as a Jew, I want to tell you, Jesus, I, people think that Jews killed Jesus. I just want to tell you, this is not heavy, I just want to tell you outright that Jews did not kill Jesus. And the reason I know is because he was making wine from water for free. We would never kill that man. We would never kill that man. We like free shit, okay? So if Jesus was on Tinder today, how would that look? I don't know, very disheveled, long hair, long beard, long robe, sandals, sandals in the profile picture. Really? And his mother's a Jew, and she's like, really, did you have to wear the sandals in the profile picture? I want to get you married! <laughs> then maybe you find out what he is, a carpenter, so not rich. Hmm. Then you find out that he's on J-Date and Christian Mingle, so he's a player. <laughs> and then he's on J-Date, he only has 12 followers, those 12 followers. <laughs> Christian Mingle, what, he's got billions of followers? So Jews, we suck at marketing, too. <laughs> And then maybe you talk to him, he's like, hey, and he's like, hey, uh, I'm circumcised, you want to see it? No, I don't want to see it, Jesus. He goes, do you know who my father is? So Jesus Christ has an attitude on Tinder. I'm going to leave you with this, one more guy on Tinder. Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler killed my people. I just don't know if you know that. He was a very bad man. But what if he was on Tinder today? How would he look? On paper, not so bad. His profile picture, black hair, blue eyes, that's not bad, right? He has a man in uniform that's very nice. It's hot. In his profile picture, he has his arm wrapped around a German shepherd, so he likes dogs. That's very nice. He likes dogs. 
Is Bio Reads world leader? That's sexy, okay? His uh, hobbies, what does he do? He's a Nobel Prize winner, right? He's an artist painter. He's an author of a book. And his hobbies include loves to bake. <laughs> That's why I'm warning you. That's why I'm warning you. I saw a sticker on the bathroom stall last week. It said, best exterminator since Hitler. As a Jew, I was horrified. Horrified! But as a consumer, he said he was the best. <laughs> I like the best. All right, I'm gonna leave you with this, guys. Um, the um, autocorrect gets me in trouble. You guys have that problem with autocorrect? I innocently wrote to my grandfather, hi, Grandpa, I'm coming to town, are you around? He's like, what kind of question is that? And it said, hi, Grandpa, I'm coming to town, are you aroused? <laughs> my phone knows me so well. So I say that word a lot, because he's hot. For 97. He's very cute. I took him to the gym after my grandmother died a couple of years ago for moral support. He said, Victoria, what machine's gonna make me sexy for the ladies? Grandpa, you're adorable. It's the ATM machine. Now give me five reps of 20. <laughs> you guys have been great. Thank you so much. If you didn't think I was funny, I identify as funny. Follow me on Instagram, Victoria Makes You Laugh. Thank you so much, guys. Give it up again for Ryan Dempsey. Thank you. Thank you. Keep it going for Victoria Arnstein, ladies and gentlemen.